Paul, time is something that everyone understands until you try to describe it. So as a cosmologist dealing with the new information about the structure of the universe, can you help elucidate this elusive concept? The first thing is, of course, that the universe is immensely old, and so by human standards, so these are vast amounts of time, 13.7 billion years. But the big question that cosmologists have asked ever since Einstein formulated his general theory of relativity is uh, the following. Is the Big Bang the origin of time or just uh, an episode in an infinite time? Uh, now, uh, what I mean by that, uh, we know that the Big Bang was the coming into being of uh, matter and energy. Uh, and maybe it was the coming into being of space and time as well. People get very confused when you say that because they say, well, something must have happened before the Big Bang. <laughs> something must have caused the Big Bang. But according to the theory of relativity, that doesn't have to be the case. That the Big Bang can be the origin of time, which means that there was no time before the Big Bang. Uh, we can talk about what happened before the Big Bang, but it's a meaningless question. The way Stephen Hawking has expressed it, it's like saying, what lies north of the North Pole? The answer is nothing. Nothing lies north of the North Pole, not because there's some mysterious land of nothingness there, but because there ain't no such place as north of the North Pole. In the same way, there may be no such time as before the Big Bang. So the question is simply defined away. And if this seems a strange idea to you, then it's not new. Uh, it was already in the fifth century, St. Augustine said that the world was made with time and not in time. In other words, he said that there was no time before the universe. So that may be how it is. On the other hand, it's fashionable now to suppose that the Big Bang was just one of many bangs and that there is a sort of eternal system where we have uh, uh, bangs going off in, in space and in time uh, so that any individual bubble universe might have a Big Bang origin, a, a beginning of its own history. It may have a life cycle of birth, evolution, and death, but the assemblage as a whole goes on eternally. So that's an alternative point but of view. But does that make time a, a, a super quality? Because if each Big Bang has its own time associated with it, but if there's a, an infinite number of Big Bangs, each one, are they each one occurring in some, in some kind of super time? It's not a super time, but time is very subtle. Einstein showed us that time is relative. And when we're talking about measuring time, we have to be very careful about the circumstances in which the clock is situated and the observer is situated. So we can define a time for our universe and we can define time, times for other universes. And relating those can be a very subtle issue. So it's not a matter of saying that there's a super time and then there's local times. All of these should fit together, but they may fit together in a really complicated way. So it's better to think that our universe has its own space and time and other universes have their own space and time. And in principle, it's possible to interrelate these, uh, but in practice, it may be something very counterintuitive and very complicated. Are you limited always by the speed of light, which means that these places of different times could never communicate in any way, so it'll be forever theoretical? In the theory I'm talking about, which is sometimes called eternal inflation, uh, the bubble universes, which have Big Bang origins, are being conveyed apart faster than they expand, so they're not going to intersect. Now, all of this is predicated on the theory of relativity, which said light is the, says light is the fastest speed in the universe, that no causal influence, no physical process can travel faster than light. And so uh, if two regions of the universe are moving apart faster than light can cross the bridge between them, they're in effect causally disconnected, that what happens in one can't affect what happens in the other. So then it becomes a bit like an act of faith as to whether these others even exist. So we can make sense of that theoretically, uh, but exactly what it means in terms of observations is another matter.